Although it doesn't look like it right away, the pattern adjustment layer works very similarly to the solid color and gradient adjustment layers. The fill is solid and will not interact with the layer below it until some other intermediate action is applied. In all of my examples, I have used layer blending modes and opacity to make the adjustment layer blend with the original image below. Pattern adjustment layers can give your images texture. Maybe you want to make a new image look like it is an old image printed in a black and white newspaper. You can definitely do this by finding a texture that creates a look via the pattern adjustment layers. Let's jump over to Photoshop and I will demo how to create a gradient and a pattern adjustment layer. So I still have the same images open that we were messing around with for the first demo. I've got this clog image here. Um, so we can apply an adjustment layer the same way, doesn't matter which adjustment layer we're applying. And so we would select a layer, in our case it's the background, I'm going to be a good Photoshop child and change it to be an actual layer. And then we can hit the little black and white cookie or the new adjustment layer icon and then choose solid color which we've already done. I'll choose gradient this time or even pattern but we'll do gradient first. When you select a gradient adjustment layer you'll get a gradient fill dialog box and you can choose via this gradient drop down which gradient you want to apply to your page. Now by default uh, or in my Photoshop it applied to a transparent uh, overlay and if you choose one that has a little gray and white grid on it you will have some layer of transparency. For now I'm going to choose a layer or a gradient that doesn't have any transparency so you can see it basically works just like a solid fill adjustment layer you can't see through it. You would have to do some sort of intermediate step to make it so that the image would be able to be shown through to the layer below. And so we'll go with the we'll call it the Christmas one, the green and the red gradient. And when you select OK, you can see on your layers panel that you have a gradient fill instead of a solid fill. And you can see that it's showing you a visual of what you're seeing on your, on your screen. If you didn't like the red and the green gradient, just go ahead and double click on it and then change it to something you like better. And then select OK. However, you can't just stay like this. You have to change it so that you can actually see it interact with the clog image. And so you can do that by using the layer blending modes that we used for the previous example. And you can click through until you find the one that, that achieves the look that you're going for. I kind of like this, so I'm going to go with it. It's the darken layer blending mode. And then always experiment with opacity. Maybe you really like it like this, but try and see what it looks like with the lowered opacity. And then you can compare whether you like the lowered opacity better. And so I'll just lower the opacity a little, and I do not like that. But maybe I like somewhere in the middle, like 76 or even 89%. And I can kind of see the black and white image showing through. The same idea applies if you wanted to use a gradient fill to replace the background in an image. And so in my case, if I have already been experimenting with the solid fill in the background, I could turn the eyeball off to remove it. And then I could add a new adjustment layer and this time choose gradient. And then now we can choose, let's do this guy here, a pink background. And then if you pay careful attention to the gradient fill dialog box, you'll see that you don't have to leave the defaults. You could make it a radial gradient. Let me zoom out so you can see it. You could even increase the scale of the gradient. And so you get more of what you're looking for for your needs. And then you can select OK. And the best part of it is it's not destructive. And so you can compare, do I like the pink and white gradient background or do I like the orange background? I like the pink and white one. I think it looks better. And so I would go with that. You don't have to delete the orange fill color layer. You can just turn the eyeball off. And then you always have it there if you want to go back to it. Okay. Let's jump back to our clog image again. I am going to uh, place the gradient fill layer below layer 0 so we can't see it. And now I want to talk about doing pattern overlays or a pattern adjustment layer. And so we'll apply the pattern adjustment layer just like we did the other one. So select the layer that you want it to kind of work with. Hit the little black and white cookie and then choose pattern. And so the patterns come in different shapes and sizes. And so right now by default I'm getting all of these dandelions. You don't have to use a picture. You could just choose a texture and you could let that texture affect your image. And so this one almost makes it look like watercolor paper. And so maybe I'll go with that one. You can scale it. You can make it bigger if you want big texture. Or you could scale it down if you want small texture. 
I kind of like it there, and we'll select OK. However, because it is in that first grouping on our adjustment layers, the solid color, gradient, and pattern, it's solid and you can't see through it unless you do something to it. And so you could lower the fill if you want to. I don't really like to just lower the opacity or the fill because it doesn't really make the two images interact. And so instead of lowering the fill, let's experiment with layer blending modes. And so you can choose darken and that's kind of a cool effect. It puts like a highlight on the shoe. Multiply, color burn, and you get all these different effects. I kind of like color burn, so I'll leave it there. And then always kind of experiment. Does it look better if you kind of lower the opacity so the change isn't as vivid? But I actually like it. I think it's a cool kind of comic booky stylized effect, so I'll leave it there. And now I'm able to add a texture or a pattern to an image without having to figure out how to paint it on or to create the texture myself. I could just find a pattern that I really like that has the texture that I need and immediately I can convert my image to have that same texture.